Hello, I'm Mark and welcome to the TikTok workshop where we are attempting to pass a distance learning course from the British Horological Institute in practical clock and watch servicing. So those of you that were watching on the last episode know that we've finished off the first practical exercise which was making up a set of hand levers. We'll be having another go at those in the future because they didn't come out perfect. But for the next exercise, we've got to make up one of these which is a tool maker's square. So uh, let me read you a quick description from the coursework about what we're doing here. So, the next tool to be made is a small tool maker's square. This is a precision tool and one that will require the best workmanship that you can achieve. It is not intended as a tool for marking out as it does not have a blade that is thinner than the stock, but rather as a tool for checking items such as the squareness of pillars and posts on clock plates. Made well and carefully looked after, it will prove most useful in much of your future work. So what the coursework is saying there is we're not actually making up a square like this. Now, if you ever look at this square, we've got a big piece of metal on the top and we've got a thin blade here. And this is designed so that you can put that flat edge against your datum and then you can draw a nice straight line down there. You can probably see that. We're not going to be making a square like this. We're going to be making one out of a single piece of ground flat stock that's intended just for checking right angles. So without further ado, let's crack on. Right, the first job that we've got with this bit of plate is to make sure that the thickness is consistent all the way through. So we've got the uh, caliper zeroed out here. We're gonna be measuring it at several different points and hopefully we should be getting three mil pretty consistently all the way through. So what have we got here? Three, halfway down, three again, towards the end, three again, We'll flip her over. Let's get that in there. So you can see it. Happy bunnies in the middle. Happy again. Well, that's a nice consistently thick piece of metal. Let's move on to the next stage. Okay, so we've got to mark this steel up and uh, we've got to put marks on there that we can see. And we're going to be trying out a couple of different methods for doing that today. So here we have Dykem Blue. Uh, you paint this stuff onto the piece of metal and then you use this tool called a scribe to scratch a line in and things should show up nice and clear. You can also do the same thing, or you've seen people doing stuff, the same thing, with a Sharpie. So just painting the Sharpie on there and then scratching the line into that. So we're going to try out both methods today. Uh, I'm going to start with a Sharpie. Right, so now that we know that the plate is at the right thickness, what we have to do now is pick a flat edge uh, that we're going to work out everything else from, So, the, which is called the datum edge. I'm picking this top, top edge up here as our datum edge, although you could pick either because they, they're pretty much exactly parallel. So uh, and now what we've got to do is make sure that one of these edges is exactly at right angles to this top edge here. So if we look we can see this edge is nearly perfect. It wouldn't take a lot of work at all, but that's boring. So we're gonna do this edge, which is completely out. As you can see, we're gonna mark and we're gonna square that up. It's a good bit of practice that for the filing. So right, let's get this marked up. Right, so we've got everything snugged up in the vise here of uh, Got the bit of metal pre uh, protected with some leather, which is what these little bits and pieces that you can see popping up here are. Uh, we've got the line as close as we can get to the vise uh, without giving us the risk of actually running into the vise and wrecking our file all the top of the vise jaws. And um, we're going to hopefully you guys can see the line. Let's have a go. Right, so I've got the first file out here, which is random crappy file number one. And uh, let's see how close to this line I can get. Right, okay guys. Right, I've had to take this back out of the vise again because um, after a while, I wasn't able to see that old line at all. But uh, this time I've coated everything with the dicom and I've squared the line in that, it looks really clear in comparison to the sharpie uh I'm, as you can tell i'm getting really close now so uh 
Not much further to go. We should soon be there. Okay, moment of truth. Have I managed to create a nice square angle here? Here we go. Do, 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 dun, 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 dun. Go on. Well, I am quite happy with that. Now, I have looked at it in a bit finer detail than this, and there are a couple of tiny errors on the corners, but so small you can barely see them, and I think that is well within tolerance. Of course, the other test is, how flat was my filing? Well, if it was flat enough, this should stand upright. Is it going to stand upright? Look at that. Right, I'm happy with that. Let's move on to the next bit. Right, okay, now that that's done, I've marked and uh, scribed 60 millimetres from that line that we just filed, and I've got to do the same again. Cut that, file it to exactly to exactly 60 millimetres. Well, not exactly 60 millimetres. I've got a tolerance of plus or minus 2 millimetres, but uh, we're going to try and get that as close to 60 mil as we can. There we go. 60 millimeters exactly i didn't need that two mil tolerance or though i really would not like to admit how long it actually took me to get that but anyway on to the next stage okay guys right i've marked this up in layout blue and i've marked the lines for the arms which you can see here so uh, what i've got to try and do now is cut these quite close to the edge and then uh, start on my filing so i'm going to go cut these now and uh, i'll come back when i've done the rough cut Okay, so uh, I've finished those two sawing cuts. One of the things that uh, you may notice is that I've left quite a bit of distance to the line. And uh, the reason I did this was because, uh, I didn't mention this last time, but when I was cutting this top length, I got really, really close to the line. And it was quite hard to uh, pull it away afterwards. I actually had to cut from the other side. So this time, I made sure that I left plenty of space to make sure that I came nowhere close to uh, hitting that line because it's much easier to file that flat than to try and run that saw blade really close to the line. Uh, so what we're going to be doing next is, I have done a bit of research into this and uh, I watched the excellent video that Clickspring did on filing and I'm going to put a link to that in the description. But what he recommends is that uh, I start by sorting this corner out first. So uh, now that we've got this shape in, I can actually get things into my smaller file and uh, we're going to be able to work from there so let me get set up okay so i'm currently cleaning out this corner here and um trying to get this uh, at the right height but you'll notice that the file that i'm using here has got cutting edges on all sides. Now normally, what you'd want, if you was coming up against an edge like this, you'd want a file that's got a safe edge in the side of it, like this one. So uh, as that rubs against that arm over there, it doesn't cause any damage. But I'm using this triangular file here because we've got to cut a notch out of this corner. And the only material that this is actually moving uh, removing from that corner is material that I want to be taking out anyway. So uh, I'm just going to go with this. Keep a good eye on the knots just in case I do end up wandering towards the line or something. But uh, I shall come back to you when I've finished up this corner. So at this point, I've got these arms pretty close to where they need to be now. So uh, I'm moving on to cutting out this notch in the corner. Now ignore this mark that I've put on here. I know that that's not accurate, but I'm just going to be using it as a guide to uh, get this corner cleared out. And uh, once I've got this corner cleared out, that should make it easier for me to finish up each of these arms to the correct dimension. So uh, I'll get back to you when I've cut that out. Uh, you see, the thing that I need here is a slotting file. I think I need a slotting file. Something better than this. Anyway, this is taking bloody ages and I've got nothing else that I'm going to be happy with sliding down there that's going to keep us under the one and a half millimetre width that we need to be here. So 
I think the other problem is I can't break out my good files. I'm not going to break out the good files for this. So, uh, yeah, that is a pity. So I think I'm just going to have to sit here and be patient and work my way through it. Right, I've got that notch carved into the corner there. It's not perfect, uh, but that's quite. that was a quite a difficult cut to make. And uh, I'm going to see what I can do when I'm finishing everything up. But this is the moment of truth. We're actually, before we have finish, give everything a finish, we're going to measure and see if we're, if we're in tolerance. So I'm going to stick the tolerances up on the screen. So let's get started on these arms. I've got to measure these at three points. So let me move that camera so we can actually see the... Okay. Two seconds. Right, let's see what we've got. So we've got a measure at three points. Nine oh five. Nine oh six. Nine oh three. So that one's in. Oh, I'm gonna check the very tips though because with my filing, and I don't know if your filing is the same, I always end up with high spots at the very end. In fact, I end up with this kind of undulating pattern uh, when I come to check for high, uh, for high spots at the end. <clears throat> but uh, so anyway, that arm is looking good. So this one, we're aiming for the 12 mil there. So let's start on the insides. Well, that's bang on. 12.05 and 12.01. So that is all within tolerance. Excellent. Right. Let me finish this up. Right, I'm a bloody idiot. I have uh, I was just sanding down these edges, getting them nice and ready for those final photos. And... Uh, I thought, you know what, I'll give them a bit of a buff with the rotary tool at the end, just to add that little bit of extra to it. I've put too much pressure down on the rotary tool. The end has slipped. I've driven that metal bar into the end, skidded up and then stopped up here. I've left two dirty great tool marks in there. That would cost me some points if it was getting marked. I'm really cheesed off about that. Absolute idiot. Okay, I'm over that now. Although I won't be doing it on this bit. No more rotary tool. So, we're finishing up now. The um, coursework suggests uh, what I've done here, which is uh, double siding a, a bit of uh, wet and dry onto an old barrette file, which is what this is. And uh, I'm going to be using this to finish this up. I'm not sure exactly what... Um, grade I'm going to need. So I'm starting off a six, with a 600 here and uh, hopefully that should do the trick. And here we have it people. Bam! Right, what's great about this is everything is well within tolerances and um, I'm really happy about the way it's, uh, that this has come out. Unfortunately, I caught it with the tool just there. I wasn't able to get that out. I could have done, but I'd have had to take it under these dimensions. I didn't really want to do that. Uh, the couple of marks that I put on the back, and uh, I think that was it. I think there was just the the couple of the Dremel and that one there. Uh, but my is, you can still see little micro scratches in everything. I'm going to uh, spend the next couple of weeks working on my polishing and see if I can get everything up to a mirror finish. I'll tell you what, guys. I learned an awful lot uh, from making up this square, and my skills have definitely improved. Um, I get the file flasher. Uh, as time went on, I, I got a bit braver with the course of files uh, when trying to um, file to the line there. And uh, do you know what? I'm calling that a success. So the next tool that we're going to be making is a scraper. And uh, we're going to be attempting some hardening and tempering with that exercise. So the blowtorch is coming out. I'm really looking forward to that. So uh, that just leads me to say thank you very much for watching. Uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next video and go out and get your hands dirty.
Do 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 do